Hello again. We've been talking about uh, denial of service attacks, availability attacks. Let's talk about a particular one today. All right, so this is uh, an attack or a worm called Code Red, uh, which was launched in 2001. So early in 2001, well in June of 2001, a uh, particular security company called EI uh, publicized a vulnerability in a Microsoft product. And a couple weeks later, uh, a worm came out which uh, use that vulnerability to break into systems. And this was called the code red worm or virus. Um, what it did was um, if the date uh, of the attack was between the 1st and the 19th of the month, it generated a random list of IP addresses and attempted to infect those machines. On the 20th to the 28th of the month, it launched a denial of service flooding attack against the White House. And the worm also had some other side effects of defacing some web pages with the words hacked by Chinese. Okay, so because of the hacked by Chinese things and because of another rather obscure reason, uh, the folks at EI labeled this thing code red. Um, it wasn't a very effective um, vector for attacking machines for a couple of different reasons, which are sort of informative. The, recall that, um, to propagate itself, the worm generated a random list of uh, IP addresses to attack, but it turns out that the random number generator, or the pseudo-random number generator, used what was called a static seed, meaning that it always started from the same position. And what that meant was that every, uh, every instance of the worm generated the same list of IP addresses to attack. And so machines which were early on that list got hammered by lots of different attacks. But, but that meant a limited number of machines were actually attacked. So, each, so then each infected machine regenerated that list and started attacking those same machines over and over again. Also, it was uh, determined fairly early that there was going to be this uh, denial of service attack on the White House, and so they just changed the IP address. Okay, so because of these flaws, very little damage was done, particularly the static seed in, in the generation of the IP addresses which were being attacked. Also, because the code red worm was memory resident, what does that mean? It means it, it uh, resided in the volatile memory of the machine. And so to get it off your machine, all you had to do was reboot and it would go away. Of course, then you stood the chance of being reinfected because you were likely to be on that list which was being generated over and over again. Okay. So, Code Red version 1 wasn't very effective, but then a week later, a new version came out which corrected some of those flaws. In particular, it had uh, a randomly generated seed, and so this had the effect of spreading the worm much more widely. Um, some 360,000 machines were affected in just 14 hours. Uh, it, so this, this caused a much greater impact than Code Red version 1. And it also wrecked havoc on the internet because many of the IP addresses which were being generated didn't correspond to specific computers, rather they, they, they corresponded to other kinds of things on the internet, like routers and printers and those kind of things. And when a, an in, infected worm was directed at those and, a, and you try to load this payload onto those kind of machines, well, they can't handle it and they would crash. And so there were lots of modems and routers and printers which were going down, and that caused a lot of trouble. Okay, so Code Red uh, was a classic computer worm and a classic then uh, denial of service attack, but it wasn't terribly effective in the first version because it contains several flaws, including the static seed. However, it, it illustrated the uh, adaptability or the flexibility of people who write these kind of things because within a week a new version was out which had collect, corrected some of those flaws and was in fact much, much more effective. Thanks.